Hey guys, and welcome to the third complete retouch section two. We're going to be doing frequency separation and skin smoothing in this section. Really exciting. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, the first thing I need to do is make sure that I've got my actions loaded up. So I'm going to click on this little play button here. It's going to bring up my actions. If you don't see that, just go to window down to actions. Okay. Now, as you'll notice in the Florin retouching action, which you've probably loaded by now, you'll see there's a frequency separation for 8 bit and 16 bit. Now, if you haven't loaded this just yet, just click on your little menu item, go down to load actions, and then here in your section one getting started under actions, double click on Florin retouching, and you'll see it right here. Now, notice there's a frequency separation for 8 bit and one for 16 bit. So you'll just want to make sure to run the action that actually applies to your image. So to check whether you're in 8-bit or 16-bit, just go to image and down here to mode. If it says 8, then run the one that says 8. If it says 16, run the one that says 16. So you can see we are at 16 here. So I'm going to click on the 16-bit and hit play. There we go. It's going to ask me to blur it so I can't see any skin texture. Let's just zoom in a couple times by hitting command plus. All right. And you know what? I'd actually like to increase that amount of blur just a little bit. Now I really can't see any skin texture. Okay, there we go. And now it tells us how to work on the texture and how to work on the color. I'll just go ahead and open it up and explain it. All right, well, frequency separation basically puts your skin color on one layer. That's this LF or low frequency. And then it puts the texture on another, and this is your HF. So if all you wanna do is work with your texture, then you're gonna be editing here on the HF layer. If you wanna work with your color, you can either work directly on this layer or you can create new layers in between. That's what I prefer to do. Okay, now we've already gone over this a couple times in this tutorial, so we're gonna be using the sample and paint method. So the sample and paint method is my favorite method of retouching because it's incredibly simple. Basically, all you need to do is grab a brush, hit B for the brush tool. We're gonna load our retouching brushes that are included in this tutorial. So you can see we have a 50 through 600. If you don't see these, just click on your little icon here, go down to load brushes, and here under getting started brushes, you'll just double click here and it'll load these brushes into Photoshop. All right, now I wanna hit shift one on my keyboard, which brings my flow to about 10%. And now my job is to sample skin and paint right next to the areas that I'm sampling. And my goal here is to smooth skin out from one area to another. I'm looking to smooth my transitions. Okay, now this is something, again, that it, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And the more you do this, the faster you'll be also. So I'm just sampling and painting and looking for anywhere that kind of like has a somewhat of a harsh transition. And I'm doing my best to remove that transition, basically. Okay, there we go. So up until now, I've just been working on the forehead. The forehead is really the only area that I've messed with just so just yet. Let's go ahead and turn this off and on. So there's the before and the after. As you can see, just the forehead is really cleaned up. Let's go ahead and zoom in and we have all of our skin texture remaining because that's on a totally different layer. Great. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Now, if you're working on a poor the pore level, you know, if you're like need to get all the little pores and things like that right then it's really great to be zoomed in. If you're working on like smoothing from one area to another one, like working on a scale like we are, it's a lot better idea to be zoomed out because then you can actually see what you're doing. All right, there we go. I'm trying to take care of this little dark patch right there by sampling some light colors and painting them in right over top of there. And if there's anything left with the texture after I'm done with this, then we just go on our texture layer and use our clone stamp tool and take care of it like that. All right, let's make this visible and invisible. Looking good. I'm just gonna erase this little area right there. All right. Sampling and painting. It's really, really fun to do. All right. 
So basically I'm just looking to minimize any type of like lines or harsh transition that we have. Don't want to completely get rid of everything. Just reduce the visibility of some of these things. All right, that's a little bit dark for me, so I'm going to grab a lighter color and kind of paint it in there a little bit. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looking great. Cool. Let's turn this off and back on again just to make sure that she still looks like her you know we don't want to we don't want to go turning her into someone else that's not our goal here we want to make sure she still has all of her facial features intact we're just smoothing the skin colors between between them all right and this is totally up to you as far as like how far you'd actually like to take this as well you know you can definitely tone this back and just have a little bit of this retouching in there. You know, you can you can have it be mostly natural if that's what you would prefer. Or you can really just go, you know, full force with it and see how far you can push it and just really have a lot of fun and go super retouched. You know, along with the retouching, it's always a good idea to keep things realistic though. You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna go too cartoony with it make the skin too smooth. It just won't look real. Um, unless that's their style. Like there's, you know, this is all just art. So if you want to make something that's like super retouched looking, then of course you can do that. Like it's, it's your right, do whatever you want. All right, beautiful. All right, let's grab this dark color there. I'm gonna paint it in a little bit. Beautiful, her face is really coming along. Okay. Right. Well, let's go ahead and turn this entire group off and on and see how it looks. Make sure we are not like um, destroying the shape of her face in any way. All right, so there's before and the after. All right, I think I like this little shine on her cheek a little bit better before. Turn these off and on. This one, maybe we'll just lower the opacity of it a little bit. So we can get some of the original like blemish marks and things like that. All right, looking good. Let's keep going, we'll create a new layer. And now because we get so much of the body here, we get to do a really good job retouching the body as well. That's why we chose this image as our third retouch because you're gonna learn all about retouching body. And it's really similar. Um, retouching body is actually a lot easier than retouching a face because it's it doesn't demand as much perfection. You know, people are really familiar with faces. Like you can tell when a, a face is like poorly retouched, like, ooh, what's going on with his eye or whatever, right? Um, the body, not so much. Like <laughs> you'd be like, th there are so many different types of bodies and, and whatnot. You can do a lot of work to a body and, um, and still have it not look like awkward or weird. So if you are first learning the sample and paint method of retouching, then the body is a really good place to kind of start off with. You can get a good feel for what you're doing and, and, and your pace and everything like that. And then once you feel pretty good about that, you can go in and start retouching um, faces. So if you want to start off with a place, get a little more comfortable, body is a great place to do that.
right. Looking good. And we'll be enhancing this even more with the dodge burn. For now, we're just evening up, evening out those skin tones. Looks like Nazarene's, Nazarene's been doing eight minute abs. Seven minute abs. <laughs> if you've ever seen something about Mary. Remember when he picks up that like hitchhiker, that crazy guy? Seven minute yaps. <laughs> that was awesome. One of my favorite movies. All right, there we go. Looking pretty good. You know what? I might even be able to like clean this up too. Sample like a lighter color here. Oh yeah, that was that was incredibly easy, wasn't it? Because the texture of the bra is on the new layer. So if I just grab the color, I can totally just paint right over there. You see how I was able to fix that? I guess that's her nipple. <laughs> Fix that thing. Um, it's just a, a piece of anatomy. But I don't mind it being gone. I don't. I don't mind retouching out nipples and things like that. That's not. That's not a big deal there because it's. You know, you. That it's done all the time, basically. You know, sometimes. Depends on your publication, right? Like Maxim, magazine, or something like that. Or like Playboy, they're not going to retouch out nipples. Um, but like, you know, like a Sears catalog probably would retouch up nipples. Okay. Now we did say earlier that the texture is all on this layer. So this little line right there, that's actually a texture issue. So I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. And now with our clone stamp tool, we're going to go to current layer. I'm going to sample the current layer and I'm make sure I'm on my texture layer. And I'm just going to sample right over here, and we're going to paint right over top of that thing. All right. And it's just going to take the texture from a different area of my photo and cover right over top of that. Isn't that cool? So we were able to completely get rid of the texture on the bra here and a couple of the bumps. Let's just turn those both off and on. All right. Beautiful. Okay, looking really good. So let's see the before and the after there. We're gonna go in and I'm gonna lighten up this area around her around her forehead. Basically just sampling the forehead here and painting right over top of the hair. It's just gonna lighten that color up just a little bit. Alright. And then a lot of the hair is actually in this in this layer. So I'm going to try with the healing brush, sorry, the clone stamp tool, clone stamp out some of the hair here as well. All right. All right. And I'm on my texture layer right now. And I'm not sure that is what I wanted to do. It doesn't really quite look that good. All right, we'll take care of that in a, with a different method. That's the wonderful thing about retouching is if it doesn't work, you just do it in a different way. All right, let's go ahead and clean up her nose a little bit. There we go, sample. And paint this in. All right, still just with my brush tool here. A little too much there. All right, cool. I think she's looking great. Let's go ahead and zoom out and look at our before and our after again. Here's our before and the after with our skin smoothing it's beautiful 
Well, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the opacity of the entire group just a little bit so I get something that looks a little bit more realistic and not like so much that retouched feeling. All right, that's looking great. Cool, let's go ahead and while we're here, I'm gonna add a hair line to our subject. We're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna do this the super um, easy way. <laughs> I wanna add more hair. Remember in our original plan, we were like, let's extend her hair down. Well, let's try just in a new layer. I'm gonna group this with itself. We're gonna call this hair. Um, and since this is like basically just black, I'm gonna sample this color here and I'm gonna start painting down. I'm just painting like more black hair. Now I know it doesn't look right on the edge, but inside of the hair, it looks pretty dang good. All right, so we can kind of decide like where we want the hairline to actually be. You'd be amazed how much retouching is done with the brush tool, guys. <laughs> Super powerful tool. All right, so on a new layer, it's like, do I want the hair to come out to here? I've just got a small brush and I'm just doing this more as like a sketch than anything else. Like, do we like the hair to come out like that? Yeah, I think that's actually kind of nice. Let's do that. Have it kind of come out, you know, like swoop out to the side there. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a real small brush and we're just gonna paint all the way to this edge. There we go, with my real small brush, just going over and over it again. It's gonna start looking like hair. All right. Let's erase some of this away. Go back in with my real small brush. All right. And now we'll put a layer mask on there and we'll paint black on my layer mask right over top of this shirt here. So we don't want to. We don't want the hair covering up the shirt, do we? All right. Very nice. Now what we're gonna do is finish that hair off a little bit. We're gonna create a new layer I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool and I'm gonna sample some of this hair up here and then we're gonna put it right down here to make it look real. So S for the clone stamp tool, we wanna to sample current and below here and let's go ahead and sample this bit of hair. Here we go, just like that. Now we'll change our blend mode from normal down to darken. And you can see now all my hair is gonna do is darken that area. Okay. Now if I wanna like stretch the hair a little bit All I have to do is bring my hair to right about there, hit Control or Command T, and then right click and go to warp. And now I can kind of warp the hair into pretty much the same exact pattern as the rest of the hair. All right, so I can have it follow along with what I just did, right? So I just painted all that with a brush tool. And now we've got some realistic hair over top of that just needs a layer mask. All right, looking good. And now with the, you see how this kind of goes into darkness here? That would happen on her shoulder as well. So I'm gonna grab a new layer, we're gonna grab our brush tool, and then with a large soft black brush, we're just gonna kind of paint this into darkness a little bit there. All right, and I'm gonna erase it from a couple of these things. That's just gonna help it look more real. All right. Beautiful, let's take a look at the before and the after with all that hair. Now, in case you're curious, I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. We're gonna to sample this bit of hair on this layer. 
All right, I'm gonna hit Command or Control T. We're gonna right click and say flip horizontally. And then I'm gonna do some blend if. So double click on this layer and I'm gonna say, don't be layer visible where this layer is darker, just where this layer is lighter and hit okay. And now I can kind of bring this in as a little bit of skin texture or a little bit of hair texture there. Let's hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask. And now I'm gonna paint white on my layer mask where we have this area here. All right, I don't need a crazy amount of skin tech, hair texture, but just a little bit is gonna keep us looking a lot more realistic. Cool. And then just to make it seem extra real, we'll put some extra hair there. All right, Command T, right click and go to warp. We'll just warp that in just a little bit more. Kind of bring it down on the bottom. Have it follow along with the actual curvature of our hair. Beautiful. Let's hit enter there. And there's the before and the after with that. All right, so we just added all of that hair to our image, which I think is really, really cool. All right, let's go ahead and paint this away on that side. All right, beautiful guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. So let's just see our before. This is the hair and the frequency separation and the after. And if you wanna see the original, here's the before and the after. We haven't done a whole, whole lot yet, but guys, you can already see how much this image has come along. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next section.